Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, I am going to embark on X-Plane Research. And we just have one contract here. Break the sound barrier. Reach Mach 1 for 30 seconds and then return home safely, which is hard. But, but, I think when they say return home safely, they don't mean the runway, they just mean Earth. So, that's not too bad. Well, let's give it a go. And I don't know, uh, somebody had mentioned that maybe I can pick up more than one contract right now. Um, polar Orbit. Polar Orbit sounds good. Let me pick, try... Okay, we can, can take two contracts now. We'll try the Polar Orbit one. We had a little bit of extra Delta V on our previous contract. Uh, on the previous launch to orbit. But we really need to make sure that we have unlocked the upgrade to our main engine because we're pushing its burn time, and it's been nice to us so far, but it's going to be not nice to us soon. So we are researching the oops, uh, orbital rocketry there, and yeah, we'll try and build that once that's done. But to the space plane hangar. All right, so this is the prospective plane that I've decided to build to break the sound barrier. Uh, we are using the only jet engine we have available to us, which is the Derwent turbojet. Got a nice intake up front, as uh, planes often did in the 1950s, even though we're in the 1970s, um, so it should be totally different. But anyway, uh, and then we have Airbies, because we've used them a lot, and so we have maximum data on them, and practically any other engine we're going to have less data on. Now, they have a rate of burn time of 52 seconds, and we've we've got enough fuel loaded for more than that. I'll actually underdo that. I'm reconsidering that. Uh, we'll, we'll sort of make a tank capable of this mount, but we'll underdo it. Now, the benefit is that we can actually slap four of those Arabies on here and light them two at a time or something like that. And I have been informed that we can airdrop planes. I'm not going to do that. We I'm going to take off from the runway. I consider... Uh, starting in the air to be cheating. After all, then you could like start in space. I mean, it's sort of a slippery slope as far as I'm concerned. Um, I would airdrop it if we were building the B-29 or B-52 or whatever, but that would obviously be very expensive compared to just making it take off of the runway. So we're gonna make it take off of the runway. The problem is I really don't want to risk a Kerbal on this. We have canards. And these are all moving canards, and I'm going to have them do the pitch only. May or may not be a good idea. We'll have these outer surfaces do the roll only. We have this uh, sort of setup because I think the jet engine's pretty heavy compared to everything else. So having a rear wing made sense, either that or a um, delta would have been good. But with the Delta, uh, the, you need a lot of control surface to get the pitch, so that's troublesome. And even modern Delta wings often have canards. I don't know if I want these inner ones doing pitch, but we'll give it a go. I would judge this to be a fairly safe design overall. We've got a tank in front and a tank in the back for the kerosene, and they're roughly balanced. And then the rocket tank is in the middle. We might want more thrust to weight ratio out of the jet engine. We really don't need an hour's worth of time on it. Uh, I might underfuel it somewhat more. I hate putting parachutes on my planes, um, but you know the Cirrus SR-22 has it. <laughs> And, uh, you know, so I guess, let's have two. Okay, but actually we should put those closer to the center of mass. That doesn't hurt things too much, so yeah, we've got our parachutes, just in case, but there's a lot of other things that could go wrong, like the landing gear failing on the runway and smacking us into the surface and everything exploding. So that's how it starts out, and then as the fuel drains here, the center mass can move up, and we'll try to, uh, I mean, that should be fine though, it should be within a good amount. 
Uh, this is the high pressure tank and then this is the regular a uh, aluminum stringer tanks. Uh, well, we've called it the Boom Boom Bonanza for a reason. We certainly don't want the parachutes to go at the same time as that. But what about astronauts? This doesn't need an astronaut. This just needs a pilot. Can we just have a pilot? Apparently these, uh, this is a pilot. Ruby Henderson. She's our only pilot though. Hold on. Boy, these names are all very particular. Um, like, there isn't even a French name. <laughs> or an Italian name. Or a Spanish name. Much less, you know, an African, Asian, or anything like that. Robert Richard. <laughs> yes, I think we'll get Robert Richard. Oh, uh, they, they just list all these people. And then we, we'd have to hire them. This is deceptive. It's like we've hired them, but we actually haven't hired them. Uh, well, we can't... Uh, we have to have propellant. Well, renovate. I prefer Kerbals with Kerbal names. I feel like they're more broadly representative of humanity. <laughs> okay. Proficiency general aviation. But there's proficiency general aviation and mission general aviation. Start training. We'll take one day. Well, at least there's that. We'll take one hour. Okay. Seems like he's doing both at the same time. No, uh, it seems like the one hour happened. And it was supposed to be one day, right? It's already only 23 hours, so it actually happened at the same time. So he didn't complete anything, even though we spent that day and it said that something was happening. Start training. Okay, now he's starting, right? Then what's the start training down there? Maybe they shouldn't have the start training down there if nobody's been clicked. So that's just a mistake. We had time warp through somebody doing proficiency, but nobody was actually doing proficiency. Hangar has to be finished. So let's build the th darn thing. Okay, somebody said that... Okay, control, shift, and alt are how you get rid of people quickly. It's amazing how many people we can put in the hangar. But maybe they should, like, write that on there. Alright, so we have trained Robert Richard, but apparently that mission training expires in on November 13th, so... Boy, it's a good thing that we didn't take any longer building this plane. Well, I don't know how well it's gonna rotate off the ground. Uh, in theory, the landing gear is pretty close to the center of mass, but... Okay, we have atmospheric autopilot, so we've got that enabled. That was suggested. Robert Richard has it is sort of an elderly gent with a mustache there. Sort of reminiscent of Chris Hadfield somewhat. Okay. My throttle isn't working. Wonderful. Okay, we're off. Gear up. Well, let's test our maneuverability and everything. Alright, we're close to 10 kilometers. I'm leveling out. And I'm prepared to turn off the turbojet if it tries to overheat as we get close to Mach 1. Alright, let's try it. We have two 
Bravo AJ1027 slip. Uh, it's really struggling. We love loud a little bit more. Will it help if I shut down the engine here? No. Alright, well, we need to optimize this a little bit. Yep. It clearly... We will take a look at the area ruling of it. It's a well-controlled aircraft. I don't think it needs that much wing. I can't even see the plane. <laughs> Such darkness. How don't you accelerate when we need you to accelerate? No way. It's pretending, it's still actually on. Come on. Oh, great. Any technology to upgrade the brakes? Well, it's not gonna do the parachutes. See, they're not configured as drag chutes. Well, I guess on that hop, that worked out for us. Oh, oh, ah, oh, we lost the jet engine. All right, well, at least Robert Richards survived. Cover to SPH, I think. On leave. Okay, well, let's take a look at it. Okay, well, we'll need a new jet engine. Maybe I should do some research of related technology because I haven't done any. <laughs> we haven't touched that at all. That might be a good idea. Air brakes are apparently a special technology that we do not have. Well, it ended up uh, unfilled with propellant. We probably don't need that much propellant. Okay, so let's take a look at the FAR dialogue. So... Transonic design. That's clearly our problem. This is the cross-sectional area curve. So... Our big problem is... There's this dip here. Which we don't like. We would like this to be... Th this part wasn't too bad because the canopy was... And that were, well, it, I would like it to not peak so much, but we can't do anything about that with the Bonanza can cabin the way it is. But this thing needs to smooth out. We can, we can just reduce the size of the rocket tank. Let's just make it all smaller, since we're not utilizing stuff much. But then we'll have to retool it, but, you know, whatever. I don't know if I like the idea, but let's see. And we can certainly make the wings smaller. Still should work out the same way it did before. Ooh. Well, that's helpful. Okay. Another option is we could go with just overwhelming power. <laughs> um, we could just have double the engines. I mean, the original, the X1 had four nozzles after all. I really don't want to get in the way of the door. <laughs> All right, so we put double the number of engines, which of course gives us half the burn time. 
It weighs more because the engine mass is increased, so that's not great. Um, we smoothed out the curve, the cross-sectional area curve, as much as I can right now. But the center mass, we would like a little bit further forward. So I'm just going to put more of the kerosene up here for now. Overall, it should move forward over time. One hour of jet fuel is more than enough, of course. Okay, uh, well, this is certainly not the same. All right, let's take a look at our technologies that we haven't unlocked when it comes to planes. Supersonic plane development. X1 cockpit. Well, I'll see. <laughs> and nicer turbojet, too. We'll try the Bonanza because it amuses me, but... All right, let's research that. And we'll uh, research... I don't want to go too far, though, because we need other stuff. But three isn't too bad. You might as well. But we'll take some time to get that research, so we might as well do this. And actually... We'll... we'll no, I really need that orbital rocketry for our orbital rocket, so... We'll do that first. We'll just have to deal with the Bonanza cockpit for now. Oh, now we've got proficiency X1 and jet fighter. Shorter wing. Overall smaller, I think. More engine power. And smoother cross-sectional area curve. Good luck, Robert Richard. <laughs> The problem with using the X1 engine for me right now is that we wouldn't have data on it. Whereas these little Arabies we have very good data on. Plus they're Arabies. Oh, uh, too high. Well, that's inconvenient. It's an unpressurized bonanza after all. Alright. I don't think we we're accelerating that quickly. Let's light the rocket engines. We are past Mach 1. But I don't think that was long enough. Four. Three. Ah, we reached Mach one, but not for the thirty seconds. I think we had twenty-five seconds, but not thirty seconds. It's gone all dark because of the clouds. I think the runway's there, but it's so cloudy we can't see it. It is there, right? This must be some weirdness. Hmm. Let me see. This is not acting like my usual visual setup here. I had my usual visual mods. Where are they? They're not appearing here, though. Hmm. Let's see about the ambient light boost. I don't know. I don't think that's gotta be good enough. Shadow cascades. Can we have fewer of those? <laughs> okay, except. Well, that brightened up a little bit, but I still don't see the runway. I see a little bit sticking out over there, but. Okay, I might regret this, but we're gonna parachute.
But yeah, it's my normal mix of visual mods that I use for KSP 1.12, and it's acting differently here, so that's a little bit weird. But I also note that apparently the Blizzy's toolbar wasn't installed automatically, so I'll have to get that as well. Okay, well, we've landed as such. I'm gonna try and get five more seconds out of the engine. Engines. I think we can lighten up our landing gear a little bit. Not the main one. The nose one is a little bit long. We keep having very strong nose up posture. Where's the food and water? Oh, I can't manually change the amount of food and water in here because he sure doesn't need like that's many many days of food and water right there maybe after we break the speed of sound we should turn two of them off actually let's have some action groups i don't suppose there's some atmospheric research we could do i don't think so taking a midnight course on this particular Mission cramming a bit. Uh oh. The landing gear position's messed up. Oh shoot. I actually gotta increase the landing gear size to move the center of mass forward. Ah. Fine, start training. Okay, we've made minor adjustments to the... Actually, pretty major adjustments since we're moving the wing. But we made adjustments to it so that it wouldn't be flopping on its tail. And all pilot... Atmospheric all pilot is on. The throttle... My lever is still not working, so... Z. And... Ignition. And we're off. But will we be able to see the runway when we come back? <laughs> well, still visible for now. Behold my supersonic bonanza. <laughs> Okay, here go the rocket engines. We've lost one of them. That may not be a problem. Top one. Well, that's even better. Well, the side ones will be worse. All right, we made it. Oh, sorry, can't breathe. Let's solve that. All right, we managed to do the sound barrier contract with uh, each crap and answer cabin and a bunch of Arabies. Well, AJ 1027s. This may be too streamlined <laughs> somehow. Is it a good idea to use the parachutes? Maybe not. <laughs> uh, 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 no, not, not that way. Uh, oh, we lost a Derwent again. Parachutes. Yeah, we, we need to configure them as drag chutes instead. Okay. But uh, Robert survived. <laughs> I did not want to go around. I mean, I could easily have gone around, but I didn't want to go around. We just need air brakes. Okay. Okay, he's resting. We got a plane brakes to speed of sound. 